Uh, greetings and welcome to another video on this channel. Um, so this time I'm going to do uh, a new uh, Bible study or sermon. It's kind of hard to, you know, say well, you know, to say which one's which because they they really do uh, bleed over into each other quite a bit. Those these two concepts. Um, so yeah, it's the title of this Bible study is slash sermon. It's called uh, Chastened But Not Killed. Uh, because, you know, um, God wants the best for us. So the idea is, um, and I, you know, I'm not the one that made this up. This, this idea exists in a lot of other fields. Uh, the idea that uh, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that is very true. Um, that is not just true, like physically, you know, you, you, you keep, you know, you work out, you get stronger, you know, you go to the gym. And as long as you're not doing anything too crazy to rip all your muscles out, then you're going to get stronger, you know, as long as you don't injure yourself. So it's the same idea, you know, same idea in life. And God wants the best for us. So he sometimes he has to punish us or chastise us, but he's not trying to kill us. Um, you know, he, he wants the best for us. He wants us to be stronger. So uh, I'm going to read. So there's actually quite a few verses I have here. Um, several different topics, uh, several different points. I've actually got five sub points. Uh, the first one is um, because you are a son of daughter of God, son or daughter of God, he loves you. So that's point one. Point two, uh, he wants to make an example out of you. Uh, point three, uh, to teach you something. Point four, so that you'll glorify him. And then finally, uh, part five, it's uh, it's better to judge yourself. So anyway, I'll, I'll get into all of that. This will probably last a few videos once again. Like a lot of these Bible studies, they seem to last a few videos because there is just so much to say. Um so yeah, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to read out of 2 Corinthians 6, 9. 2 Corinthians 6, 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Um, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live as chastened and not killed. Okay, now the verses that come before that, like the first eight verses there, they're actually really good verses, but they like, don't really have anything to do with what I'm talking about. So if you're interested, you might want to read verses 1 through 8 as well. But here in verse 9 it says uh, at the end, um, as chastened and not killed. So, you know, <laughs> that's really where I'm getting the title for the sermon is... Uh, you know, you're chastened, but you're not killed. So God, when God uh, punishes you, he puts you through trials and tribulations in life. Um, he does want the best for you. He is trying to make you grow and get stronger. So also, um, I'm going to read out of Psalms. So yeah, that was 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Uh, I'm also going to read out of Psalms chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. So Psalms, verse, uh, Psalms chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Uh, let's see. To the chief musician on Neginoth upon Shemineth, a psalm of David, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. So yes, God uh, knows that we are weak, and that we need help. And so he knows we're weak. So it's a, you know, he, here he's asking for mercy. David's asking for mercy. And God will show mercy. I mean, if you, if you pray for mercy, God shows mercy. I mean, if you really mean it, if you really mean it, if you need help, God does show mercy. Um, you know, if you suffer, there's always a reason. There, there's a reason for every trial and tribulation. It doesn't just happen randomly, you know. Um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're like, a, if you get really caught up in science and you don't believe in God and you're an atheist and you believe everything's random, um, you know, it's, that's, that's not the case. It's, it's, it's not random. Um, let's see, because why does God allow us to suffer? Um, 
And one example, like one example of these, uh, someone in this, uh, you know, position was Job. And uh, J Job wondered because Job did a lot of things right. Um, he did do good. I mean, he was a rich man, but he did work hard to become, you know, wealthy. And he did try to live a good moral life and, uh, you know, try to do well, try to teach his children well tried to help others, and then all of a sudden, he just lost everything. And he kind of wondered why, you know, because it didn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. Uh, you know, like, we always expect everything to be logical, um, but the world isn't very logical. It's not logical. Um, th there are no logical results. Uh, criminals can get away with crimes. Uh, good people can suffer. Um... Yeah, like, but that's not like, you know, it's it's not logical. Not everything that happens in life is logical. In fact, a lot of things are are illogical, and um, you know, and I understand humans like you know we try to you know make things logical and try to make our in government institutions and businesses and everything more fair. And yes, I do believe there have been a lot of. Um, um, I, I feel like there's been a lot of success over the last hundred years in terms of making the world a better place, but ultimately the world is still a very illogical place, an un unfair place, and it really will only be fair and the utopia that you know man strives for, that man is trying to create, it really only exists in heaven. Man by himself, sinful man, cannot create a utopia because sin will always exist, and sin will always ruin that utopia that man tries to create. Only in heaven will we actually see that utopia where we finally live in a world without sin. Only then will we actually see a utopia. We have to change, that's it. Man has to change. Uh, changing the world, you can't really change the world, you can't change the environment around us. What we have to change as a people, but we can't because that, that's our nature. Where as people, we cannot change uh, we're we're, gonna have, we're still gonna have that sin nature, um, so that that's why we need God. That's why without God we are we are truly lost. Um, so Job, you know, Job wondered. Job wondered why he was he was suffering, and um, he never like you know God you know God finally answered him at the end. You know there there's a reason behind it, but. Um, you know, he, he still, he, it took a while, you know, it took a while to, to, for him to get his prayers answered, but eventually happened. But there's always a reason, there's always a reason. So, um, so that, anyway, I'm going to get to my first point here. Okay, yeah, so we're continuing. Uh, so my first point, my first point is that, um, uh, you know, why you're chastened is uh, because you're his child and God loves you. So uh, I'm going to read out of Deuteronomy chapter 8. So if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Yeah, so Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5. 5 through 7. So Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 7. Uh, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Uh, so God wants the best for you. So that's why he chases you. So when you're doing something wrong, he lets you know that you're doing something wrong because you're his child. He doesn't want you doing bad things that will hurt you. Um, now, I feel like this concept might be somewhat lost in this generation because our family structure is so messed up in many families. Um, many people don't know what it's like to have a decent dad that cares for them and wants the best for them. Or, I mean, or in some cases, they even a mom. Um yeah, like, I feel like it's been kind of lost, like, but uh, normally, normally, this is how it's supposed to be. Um, your, your, your parents are going to want the best for you. And, um, you know, your, your parents, 
especially your dad might be kind of strict with you because they want you to do right. They, they don't want you to you know do bad things and get hurt. They don't want you to get spoiled because those parents that do spoil their kids and just give them whatever they want, uh, those are actually those end up being some those be, end up just being kind of drains on society. Those, those are people that have a hard time working, functioning. Uh, they just end up being lazy their whole lives uh, because they've been spoiled their whole lives to become lazy and so that, that is not good that, is, that does not teach you to be a functioning member of society and this is just common sense even in like just among people in general like it doesn't even have to be christians but it's just bad sense so a lot of parents you know especially in the current generation i think some people really spoil their kids and then those kids have a really hard time like later in life so don't don't spoil your kids you know they um, and so God, God doesn't give you everything you want. He gives you everything you need. So just, just what you need. Um, so that, that's, that's God. So God is strict, but loving. So that's, that's how it's supposed to be with your parents, uh, especially your dad. But a lot of us don't know that, like, because we don't have like a real life example. So we can only go off of, uh, other people's, uh, you know, life experience and, you know, what the Bible tells us, but this is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's, uh, this is how it's, it's normal. But I do think in our modern world, uh, this, the, the concept of like what a normal family is, it's a bit skewed because it's had a bit out of whack because a lot of us never really had that as kids. Like what's, what's a normal family? Um, we're supposed to, but even, even if you didn't, even if you didn't, God can still make things right. You know, um, God is your father. Even if you never had one, uh, or a good one, or whatever, uh, God is your father. So that that should be good enough. Um, so just always keep that in mind. So if God's ever strict with you, chastises you, it's because he really does want the best for you. And he has more wisdom than any of your parents ever could have. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, so then moving on to the next verse. I have quite a few verses, actually. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity... I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him uh, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. But my mercy shall not depart away from me, him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So... Let's see. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from so, um, in the Bible, it's like, in the Bible, it actually says that, um, like, disciplining children is okay. That's normal. Um, that, that, that's how you're supposed to learn. Now, in the modern world, especially, like, in first world countries, that's, like, a foreign concept. That's immediately called child abuse. And... Um, that's also been lost. So you see a lot of things that are like biblical and correct. They've been lost. Uh, though these concepts have been lost because you've, you've had some, you know, you've had indo indoctrination in the public school system and just in society in general and people's minds have been kind of warped and they don't really know. They can't separate good from evil anymore. So automatically it's child abuse. Yeah, okay, there's child abuse. The child abuse is bad. But this is, this is, parents disciplining their children and that's not necessarily child abuse and there are definitely you know there's definitely a line between the two you know between what's child abuse and what's acceptable but in the modern world it's like it's just all of it is just considered unacceptable and that's because once again a lot of parents spoil their children they don't really have an idea of what it means to discipline anybody and um but yeah but this is biblical that's what the bible says and I know the I know those that have been disciplined as children. They generally they come out as, as decent people. 
uh, because they learned at a young age that um, sin gets punished. So when sin doesn't get punished, it's like it says in Ecclesiastes, um, because sin is not punished speedily, it is set in the heart of man to do evil. So when you don't punish sin in some form, meaningful form, sin needs to be punished in a meaningful form. When it's not punished in a meaningful form, people just do whatever they want. And people get away with it. Like People just are just going to continue doing what they want because it's like, well, there's no punishment. So people are just going to do it. That's when we have, that's when we have laws. If we didn't have laws that got enforced, not just laws on the books, but laws that get enforced, people would just do whatever. You'd have a lot more murderers. You'd have a lot of criminals. You'd have a lot of robbers because it's like, well, there's no punishment, so I can just do whatever. And some people, um, like you can't just trust man to just be good. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. You need laws to just to protect people from, you know, the... Uh, well, it's uh, from, from themselves, really, because uh, there's always going to be someone trying to commit crimes. So th this, is, this, is, so, um, this is just common sense. So sin needs to be punished. And if you uh, teach children at a young age that uh, sin will be punished, then they will, uh, they'll learn from that. And then instead of they learn as a child... And that's better because then they'll learn. Uh, if you, they don't learn that as a child, then later they might do something in, as an adult where uh, simply uh, getting whipped with a belt isn't going to cut it. They're going to get thrown in jail. And so it's better to, to discipline the children at a young age so they do right, so that when they're adults, they don't do things that are criminal or get, to get them in jail. Because currently, at this point in the history of our country, America, um, I mean, you could be listening from wherever, you know, maybe years down the road, this video will be up here and, you know, there'll be people all over the world listening. Who knows? But, um, you know, I'm from America and I'll say that um, I think from what I've heard, from what I read, uh, there is more money spent on jails than on public school education. So we're spending more money on jails. Well, wouldn't it be better just to educate the kids correctly in the first place? Like actual good morals morals from a young age so that they don't end up in jail. And then we, we can save a lot of money not having to keep people in jail. If you just educate them right in the first place, they don't end up there. Anyway, just common sense, really. Um, but yeah, so just, just keep that in mind. So... So you see how the warped the world is. They they don't they don't it's warped. That they don't they don't see things like God thinks. So you you want to be able to see things the way God sees them. So that's why you need to stay in the book because if you don't stay in the book, then you're gonna start thinking like the outside world and you're gonna make very wrong conclusions about uh, what, what what's logical. Okay, your, your your sense of logic and common sense is gonna be very warped if you just get it from the media and from what you were taught as a child in public school. Like, it's just going to be completely warped because you, you have been indoctrinated. Like, that, that's just a fact. Um, if you have not been keeping your head in the book and in, in prayer and in church with, with the right church, because there's also plenty of churches that have been indoctrinated with, you know, the stuff of the world, then um, chances are you're believing, you know, you, you have been indoctrinated or brainwashed in some way. And it takes time to realize that. Not everybody realizes that they have been indoctrinated and brainwashed and that they need... Um, and it takes some time. It takes some time to, to get out of that, that train of thought, like to, to think outside the box and to just like throw away whatever you were taught and just completely think differently. Um, and that, that's really one of the main themes of this channel is to undo brainwashing, undo indoctrination that you have... Uh, that you've gone through. That's really what this, that's really one of the main things because it's affected all of us. It's affected all of us and you have to, un, you know, undo all of, undo that damage. Um, so it's it just, it just better. Um, let's see. So yeah, let's see. Let me read those verses again. I'll be spelling it. And he committed and I'll chasing him. So it says here in verse 14 and 15, it says that 
um, he will, you know, he, he's, he's trying to be merciful. That's why he punishes you because he's merciful, because you're his child. It says he took his mercy away from Saul. So he says he will not take his mercy away from David and from his children, you know, because he's going to, he allowed David to continue being the king. And his entire line was going to be, you know, we're going to be kings. And he promised that. Now, Saul, though, he took his mercy away from Saul because Saul, you know, you know, it's just the same idea. When you're not God's child, then maybe he won't punish you. Like, that's actually one of the worst things. When God doesn't punish you and he just lets you do whatever, that, that's a bad sign. That means, like, you are you know, if you're saved, you're still God's child. But if he just lets you go and he doesn't punish you, then that's scary. You can end up wherever. I mean, if God doesn't punish he punishes you because he tries to get you back in the church, tries to get back in the fold of God to do right, to think right. If he stops punishing you, if he doesn't chastise you, then it, it says like in the Bible, it says like you're you're like a bastard, which is basically saying you're like uh, you're like not his child. Now that's um, you know if you're saved, then you know you can't lose that, you can't lose your salvation. But you know it's it, it, it'll be as if you were unsaved because if he's not punishing you, then he just lets you do whatever he wants. That that's that's actually a scary position to be in. Um. So. So you want to show, um, so punishment is actually mercy. That's really the one of the, the main points here, is that punishment is actually mercy. As God showing his mercy. And there's no mercy in hell. There's no mercy in hell. So he punishes you now to save your soul. That's what it, that's what it actually says. I forget the verse, but it says that you know, he punishes you because he tries to save your soul. You know, if the body faces physical damage and God has to put you through a lot of trouble in life just to get your attention so that you get saved, then it's worth it because your soul is more valuable than anything else. It's Your body isn't worth anything compared to your soul. Your soul, your eternal soul, is, is, is that's it. Like that's the, your most valuable position. It exceeds everything else. Your, your, your physical life is nothing compared to it. Your eternal soul, that is what he's trying to save. That's the most important thing you have. That's you. That is the you that will live on forever. So that, that's what's important. So rather than you end up in hell, he is, he is willing to punish an unsaved person, trying to get their attention, to try to get them back, to try to get them saved. And if you are saved, then he will punish you and try to get you back in church so you can do right again. And it, it's kind of a way to stop you, you know, from doing something worse and dumber down the road. He'll do something to get your attention. And that, that's how God operates. He really does that. Um, so, so if he beats you over the head, then it's it's that's good. It means you're actually you're one of his. Um, so there's, because, there's, because, like I said, there's no mercy in jail. You know, better punish the child now so they don't end up in jail later. End up having a much more miserable life later. Or, or in hell, you know, it's it's better to take the punishment now than to suffer much worse consequences in the future. Um, let's see, let's do it. Yeah, so, yeah, you know what, let's end the video now. I'm going to continue this next time uh, from Proverbs 19.18. So I've got plenty of more examples here, and we'll just keep going. So, um, yeah, this channel is going to keep going. I might not always be able to post. Uh, I try to make one video a day, but, you know, I'm going to be busy. I'm actually going on vacation. So uh, I don't know if next time I'll be able to post, but I will keep. I'm going to keep at it and see what God does with this channel. So see, uh, so see you next time.